so the next question talks about connecting specifically, you know, with soul, with essential self, with those gut desires. And, you know, how do we discern what makes sense for our own personal health from a financial standpoint and most importantly to meet individual creative needs and channel all of that in a way that serves the world. So how do we mm-hmm. connect to to discern what makes the, the best long-term sense in those multiple you know, regards? Mm. Well, I think we have to start with, you know, assessing the constraints that are very realistic, like if you have children, priority one. You can't go off and do something idealistic that doesn't make money right away. So, mm-hmm. or that uh, your your husband's going to move for a new job in a year. So you need to be developing something that could shift locations, maybe. So you know mm-hmm. you have to put those constraints out as the part of the criteria and the variables that you're going to work with in solving the problem, and then you you can see whether you could start doing something while keeping your old job and not going cold turkey you know, so that you put yourself into fear and panic. You don't want to do that and mm-hmm. put too much pressure on yourself at an early stage. But So maybe you keep your present job, maybe go part-time, or do something in your extra time where you start a support group to bring people together who want to learn to do the thing you want to do, or you give some friends guinea pig sessions if you're doing healing or something, uh, and you build it slowly, but keeping the idea on that the part of the goals you have is that you want a new career that's going to support your kids or that's going to help you buy a new house or move to a new location where there will be more people that you like that are on your wavelength or, you know, whatever your constraints are. And you, you maybe you ask your intuition, you know, how, how many stages might I need to go through for this? What, maybe I need more training? Do I feel mm-hmm. like I want to take a course? Do I need to get different kind of friends? What are the things that will help me? So then ask for those things. And then go find options. Do research. I mean, it's not all just Mm going to fall in your lap. (laughs) You know, you get the idea and you ask for help, and then you watch the synchronicities occur, but you also help create them Mm -hmm. by looking and asking. You do your part. The universe does its part. And then you validate that when it happens. And it's, I think it's important to feel lucky. Hey, look at what just happened to me. This was great. I just wanted that, and look what happened. There it is. So celebrate those things. Yes. And then keep asking and saying, okay, what, what's new right now? Is there another piece of the puzzle that's falling into place? Mm-hmm. I think it's just it's like that. It's the puzzle pieces fall together step by step, moment by moment. You get a lead, somebody tells you at dinner about a friend they know who's in charge of such and such at an a organization somewhere, and you think, I think I'll call that person. Just talk to them about what their job is like or see if they have any openings. Just follow leads, and it all comes through intuition. You had a, a couple parts of this question. One was the personal, but then you said something about collective or um, cultural. What makes long-term sense for you personally, you know, with for your health um, in multiple regards? You mean physical From health? Financial. Yes, physical health and, and mental mm. and spiritual health. <clears throat> you know, just that balanced state of health in yes. um, creating. But yes. also from a financial standpoint and maybe most importantly to meet your individual creative needs in a way that serves the world. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think it's important to start off in a way that is suitable to your personality. If you're a really active, aggressive person, then maybe having a big ambition in the beginning is great for you, like take on a big goal that charges mm-hmm. you up. If you're not, then take on ideas and things to do that just feel fun that are leading toward a bigger reality that will also be fun. Mm -hmm. so that you can expand yourself gradually to accommodate the vision. So I think you have to read your own personality a bit. Um, I'm a big advocate of saying to myself, what's my next courageous act, which I have done many times through my life, of saying, all right, I've been teaching seminars for a while. What would be the next level? What would be my next courageous thing to do that I don't know how to do that's beyond my comfort zone? Like, okay, write a book or work with bigger audiences or, you know, like I had to left California and moved to Florida. So uh, 
where, what about if you live around people who aren't in your on your wavelength? How do you maintain your consciousness? That's an interesting challenge. So there are, are a lot of answers to that question, but I think if you challenge yourself constantly to go beyond your comfort zone, and it doesn't have to be all fear-based. It can be what's what's my next you know real big creation that wants to come through mm -hmm. me. That it keeps you fresh, and and that way you also do enlist the assistance of more people. You develop more of a kind of soul group, more of a sense of an audience or a, a, a collective consciousness that you're mm -hmm. part of. And this becomes the service to the culture or to the field which I think we all want to do. You know, we don't want to just be selfish and separated. I think everybody has a compassionate drive. Yeah, it can get lonely when you believe. Um, that was actually one of my own things that I've overcome this year is that to realize that, oh, I'm not alone. And I don't have <laughs> to do everything by myself. And the universe, you know, wants me to jump in and, um, meet other like-minded people and be vulnerable and start to live, you know, my truth. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you find that the other people have pieces of that puzzle that yours fits into that, mm -hmm. are, that allow you to expand your vision, that you thought you were just doing one thing, but oh my gosh, I'm actually going to do this, which is even mm -hmm. more exciting because they're pitching in to help. And everybody, you know, especially when you're like a presenter and you want to put information out, and then you find somebody who loves doing promotion, and that's their thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you go, wow, fantastic. So it, it's such a joyful relief when you find the people who fit together with you. Along that vein, a lot of people's experience is not always joyful or of the highest vibration, especially because we, you know, we run into certain hang-ups or unplanned things or we make errors. So how have you personally navigated some of those negative emotions and experiences that have arisen throughout the process of developing your own business, working for yourself? That's really a hard one. Part of it is understanding that people are at different levels of evolution. I think that mm -hmm. some people are still caught in early wounds and mm -hmm. are acting out. I think we can get ourselves caught in, especially in corporate realities, where there are large collections of those people who mm -hmm. are not entrepreneurial by nature, who want the security and safety of a job that lasts for a long time. And then they, the only way they can really express themselves under that culture, which is, can be suppressive, is to act out mm -hmm. or to be egotistical or uh, passive aggressive. and. I think at certain points, people are realizing now as their own frequency gets higher that they can't live in that field of low vibration anymore. There's, right. It's not that those people are bad or anything, but that they're not at the same frequency that we are. We're growing, and we end up getting ejected out of that field. Either we leave or we get fired or something, you know, mm -hmm. and we think, what did I do wrong? Well, you just don't fit there, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So if it's in the, the works for you to be in a job like that for a little while, I think you have to work with the energy. And again, you still have to find ways to entertain yourself and love the people. So you look for the soul. You try to talk to the thing they're really asking for. If they need attention, then you give them a lot of compliments. You give them what they are unconsciously asking for. And yet you also have to have boundaries to say this is the job, this needs to be done, this is what you're hired for is to do this job, so you can't be absent all the time, for example, you know, or talk on your phone all the time or something. There are rules here because this you're getting paid to do this. So it's a combination of compassion and clear boundaries. And then knowing when it's time to leave. You know, I think communications is one of the most important hard, complicated things because we have all these different communication styles. You know, you do any personality typing tests and you understand we have all these different types of filters. But I think heart is maybe the, the way to unify all the different varieties. The more you can come from heart and stick to centering into the facts 
of what's really true, what the original agreements of a job are, for instance. You know, in any relationship, there are assumptions. And those are in the unconscious and in the non-physical world. And then the rules of behavior come into the physical world out of that inner blueprint. Yeah, yeah. and so um, if a job description changes, then the inner energy patterns between people will change. Mm -hmm. And so that has to be acknowledged and accounted for. Yeah. So, I mean, it, maybe I'm saying there's a need to be able to understand the inner energy patterns of something and watch the non-physical trends and see what the energy's doing and then see how the physical is matching that. And if people are stuck in old definitions and the energy has changed into a new pattern, then there's always going to be tension and things will end up exploding so that the energy can be freed up to repattern itself. You know, And I think that's, that's happening in large corporations now and in large organizational systems because the rules are changing. Interestingly, um, after you and I had spoken last, and I originally thought that I needed to get a new job while I create my, my business, but it, it just wasn't working. I was, I was looking for jobs, and I was sending out resumes, and I was getting kind of the, the responses were very few, and the ones that were responding were like insurance sales positions and you know things that I definitely knew I didn't want. And what ended up occurring to me as I, I asked, and I got quiet, and I said, what is going on right now? Am I, am I supposed to be here? And really the information that I got was that this particular position is just fine for me to stay in right now. It meets a lot of my requirements gives me a lot of freedom. I have a company car, and I get to go out and just meet people and just help them. And the biggest thing, what I learned was that my goal or my requirement while I'm here right now is just to learn to live and to come from the heart center in my work. So just to constantly recenter myself in that heart energy and just to really learn how to deal with everyone, see everyone and everything as support and love them and just come at it from a really helpful perspective of providing information but always, you know, learning to live in that heart space and because I'm not there yet and so that's what I'm going to focus on doing and that's that getting, you know, allowing that information to come through is, I, in my experience, so far has been the most vital. Yeah. And, you know, the f interesting thing is then as soon as you start to really practice that and feel like you're getting it, then... Mm -hmm. You'll come. It'll, you'll come through to yourself with another goal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, an inner one, or or suddenly the job will change, and there will be right. the, the next opportunity will show up. But you know, I think that if we resist seeing what the goals are, like yours is is one that a lot of people have. There are mm -hmm. interpersonal skills, or energetic skills, or emotional skills that we're learning. Not so much getting accolades and lots of money but learning these nuances of behavior and how to hold ourselves in the world, how to do things in the world. And once you learn those skills, then it immediately shifts. Because, okay, that's done, next thing. And spirit, mm -hmm. soul, or whatever, brings it. The collective moves you on. The flow moves you into the next thing that you're going to need. And that might be, you know, a bigger challenge at work that integrates for more of your natural skills. There's something here I guess I'm saying about trusting that flow, but also acknowledging why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And then saying, okay, I guess I'm doing this because of this right now. Like I had a period here where all my clients dropped away. And I was like so busy before, I was like, what is happening? And then I realized, oh, it's, I'm, I'm, I really wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And it's giving me time to concentrate. So it's working, but I was my left brain was complaining, whereas I had just given myself exactly what I needed. <laughs> yeah. So uh, part of it is that acknowledgement and then using the time or using the energy in that way and doing it. In, in working for yourself over time, what aspects have you found to be the most challenging? And what advice can you give to assist others in learning from and overcoming, you know, their own challenges, um, entrepreneurial challenges? 
the first thing that comes to mind is the achieving the balances, and these are fine line balances. We need both sides of issues often, but often we do them in a rocking way. Like, I need space to myself to think and go deep where I'm not bothered by other people. And then I need other people because they bring out questions and they open me to new ideas and they generate innovation and flow and, you know, stimulation. But then too much of that and I can't, I'm like frozen, can't do it. So there's a kind of an oscillation between various kinds of polarities that we need personally. You know, there's time when you need to just be blank and stare into space. And there's other times when you're furiously creative. People, no people, home versus travel. Those kinds of polarities to look into your own life and see which kinds of polarities are affecting you. And then find a way to get both sides of it rather than protesting that, oh my gosh, I don't have enough travel, or oh my gosh, I'm not at home enough, or oh my gosh, I'm too busy with other people. And, and just say, oh, I'm just noticing that I may have had my fill of this one side and I'm ready to do the other side now. Right. And don't make it a problem. Just notice that you're showing yourself that the, the oscillation or the figure eight is changing direction. So I yeah. think that's one big piece is that kind of management of maybe it's you have a family and you have to do family versus work, personal versus professional. So we each have our own different ways of, of creating that kind of balance. And it can be more challenging because, you know, like if you work for an employer, depending on what your position is, you have your set hours, you mm -hmm. go in at a certain time, and then you go home at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And with working for yourself, you have to create right. your own schedule. Right. And it's easy to work seven days a week, you know, and not take time mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't have other people making you do it. Yeah, so those balances are important. And then I think the idea of challenging yourself to do more, to change the, the evolutionary flow, to uplift yourself or upgrade yourself voluntarily. Mm -hmm. All right. And also to not interpret things as setbacks or problems or that you're at fault. If you make a mm -hmm. mistake, then you say, oh, what did I get from this? Oh, I was not staying in my body. I wasn't paying attention maybe. Or there's some new aspect of life that I'm trying to get myself to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So like working with the experiences that occur to interpret them. Stay present and learn. You know, that's it, I think. I don't see too many other problems. I think it's just stay okay. positive, really, that everything is for evolution. You know, it's funny that you say that because that was one of the things that really allowed me to ask the universe, okay, why am I getting hung up here? Why am I not finding another job? And when I really started to look at the process and what was going on with me and I was you know, I started to be starkly honest with myself. What I realized was that this is about some of my personal things that I kept thinking were going to be that, oh, when I create my business, you know, all this stuff's going to go away. But the reality was, you know, this is me. This is, this is all stuff that I still have to deal with. And for, for whatever reason, my soul is not going to let me proceed until I deal with these things. So and Another um, way to say that would be that you want to deal with these things. Yeah. And you're not going yeah. to move on until you do. Right. There's no external force like making us do things. <laughs> it's us. Right. I think there can be a, that we can have intuitions about our life path and even our future, like what we're aiming for our life work. And then it takes a time and sequencing to actually allow that to occur in its natural um, way. Mm -hmm. But the left brain will grab onto that intuition and say, well, that's what I should be doing. Right. Why am I not doing that yet? And then it'll put pressure on you and you'll feel like you should be and that something's wrong with you and you'll start interpreting everything you're doing negatively. When really, mm -hmm. if you just relax, you'll realize, I can do that, but is it time yet? No. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes the goal will be there, but it will serve partly to bring up 
the interferences to that goal. For instance, um, maybe I want to be known worldwide and travel all over the world and teach and whatever. And but then part of my, you know, upbringing is that I'm shy and I like, oh my God, could I handle that many people? Could I handle right. that many des demands on my schedule? Do I want that really? I mean, my, my left brain may say that's grandiose and wonderful and that's what I should be doing. But deep down, maybe there's a more personal feeling of just rightness about mm -hmm. taking it in an intimate level first or a letting, letting popularity come in a, a more organic way that's, mm -hmm. that remains personal throughout where it doesn't become artificial. And maybe your soul is directing you in the evolution of your career or work so that it stays in the kind of frequency you want it to, to stay in. Right. Like there are a lot of people who get hugely popular and famous and then they have no personal friends. You know, it's, they can't trust anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want that? Or do you want to do it in a way that has the kind of heart connection that you really want? Mm -hmm. And your soul knows that. You know that. You are the soul, you know, and you will tend right. to evolve yourself in the way that fits for your real true goals. Other people mm -hmm. may model other other ways of doing it, and then you'll go, oh, and often you'll look at them and say, oh, I hate the way they, they are. <laughs> you know, you'll have judgments right, about right. it. And, and then really it's because, well, I don't want to do it that way, and I don't want to be forced to have to do it that way. Yeah, it just doesn't fit for you. Yeah, so then you realize, oh, that's that's fine. They can do it that way, but I have my own way, and I'm going to do it the way I like. Right. So, you know, a lot of subtleties come up in these processes of discovering ourselves, let's say, or discovering how to, how to do your life work and evolve your life work, and that it's mm -hmm. even possible to do your life work, that it's okay to do your life work. Right. 